जय हिंद एंड वेलकम एवरी वन ऑन दिक्स डे ऑफ स्किल डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम ऑन फूड एंड बेवरेज सर्विस My name is Vinay Punia, and I am Assistant Professor at Bika Ji Kama Subharti College of Hotel Management, and I will be the moderator for today's session. Today, we will begin with an online guest lecture by Ms. Tatiana on the vodka, and about the speaker, Ms. Tatiana. She is a global educator, business developer, with more than 20 years of international experience in sales, distribution, marketing, brand building, training, event across FMCG, wine, spirit. tobacco sports apparel industries she has done ma distinction in foreign language translation and linguistic from st petersburg university russia from 2010 until 2020 she has been global brand ambassador for russian standard vodka she is advanced level 3 certificate of wset that is wine and spirit education trust distinction her area of expertise are training sales brand management international business development negotiation relationship building luxury event product and services now we will bring our speaker ms tatiana she is live from london hello everyone can you hear me okay <laughs> the connection is working between london and india very nice <laughs> So thank you for having me today at, at your course, uh, and I will be delighted to share with you um, a, a session on the vodka category. Uh, I, call, I hope everyone, uh, you know, will find it useful and have a good connection. And any questions, do let uh, the moderator uh, Vina know, and we will answer them later. So. Uh, vodka category. I will share with you my screen now, so we can talk through the main points about vodka. What is vodka as a spirit? How many vodka brands are in the world? What makes vodka different? Uh, different styles of vodka, different taste profile. And we'll finish with a little bit about the cocktails uh, with vodka. And I will mention you a few main ones. And then after my lecture, you can see. Um, Uh, a session with Vinay on the cocktails. I hope it sounds like a good plan. So let's start, and I will share my screen now. And we'll do it full screen. Great. So I hope you can all uh, see a few slides which I have prepared for you. Yes. Uh, on the yes, vodka category. Fantastic. So, what is vodka? Uh, broadly speaking, it's you know it's the largest spirit category in the world, and it's the biggest spirit out of all of them, compare by volume, comparing with gin, rum, you know, uh, tequila, everything else. Vodka is the largest spirit category, and. Uh, the word what does it mean vodka when we say vodka for russians for example and for polish people it's obvious that the root of the word comes from uh, water in russian it's voda so vodka vodachka vodichka it's water uh, connected with the spirit vodka and what does it mean so the deep meaning of the word is the water of life So it's a concept which you can find in every culture pretty much for centuries and in a lot of languages. In Latin, it's aqua vita. In French, it's eau de vie. Uh, in Scandinavia, you have it as a spirit called aqua vit. And even in Scotland uh, and uh, Japan and India, where you, they make whiskey, <laughs> whiskey also means a uh, the water of life in old gaelic language ushkiba it started as that and then it was turned into ushki and into whiskey so as you can see it's a very uh, you know historic old spirit which existed for many many centuries in many many cultures in russia before we created the word vodka the spirit was called bread wine In fact, wine for Russians meant vodka back in the old days. And if you make it not from grapes, but from wheat, from grain, 
the same way like you may make bread from, uh, it, it was called bread wine. And then later on, it started to be called vodka. If you look at all vodka category around the world, and there are many, many brands. Uh, if I saw you face to face, I would ask you, how many vodka brands do you think are there in the world? And uh, you would probably be guessing quite a while until we reach the big figure of 5,000. So there are a lot of vodka brands in the world. And even in Russia only, you have about 2,000 and a half different vodka brands. That is why Russia as a vodka market is the largest country in the world, uh, which produces most vodkas, the biggest volume of them, and also the widest varieties. And the way people consume and drink vodka around the world is very different. Basically, you can divide the world between cold climates and hot, warm climates. For example, in Russia during winter months, and we have six long winter months in Russia, you would drink vodka neat, undiluted, nicely chilled, and it goes very well with food which we use in Russia, which is a lot of hearty dishes that are very good during cold months. A lot of meat, uh, cured fish, salty things, preserved, pickled, etc. If you're living in a hot climate, uh, you prefer vodka in a cocktail, in a much lighter on alcohol and more refreshing drink, right? So there are countries uh, where you would enjoy vodka in a cocktail. And I will show you that's the difference. This is in red. You can see more or less the vodka belt countries where because of the climate and the culture, vodka is consumed undiluted, neat. In the rest of the world, uh, like this, you can see in Russia, for example, this is uh, the largest premium vodka brand made in Russia in St. Petersburg called Russian Standard. And this is how you would find it consumed back in Russia with a few pickles, some food in little shots, very nice and chilled. And around the world, as you will see also in, from your cocktail session, you can create any type of cocktail based on vodka can be sweet, can be sour, can be spicy, can be a mixture of all of them. And this picture shows you uh, the classic uh, signature international serve, which is very popular across the world, uh, called uh, Moscow Mule. Moscow Mule, one of the iconic vodka cocktails created around 1970s in uh, the USA with Smirnoff vodka first. Uh, they called it Moscow Mule because of two reasons. Uh, to association of with Russia, because Smirnov used to be a master distiller in Russia during the uh, 19th century. And Mule, because it has a little kick, because it's made with spicy ginger beer. And ginger beer, as you all well aware, ginger has that spicy, wonderful note. So together with vodka, they form a perfect combination and a bit of lemon or lime juice. Uh, and that's, for example, one of the most popular vodka cocktails around the world, Moscow Mule or Russian Mule, we, we called it with Russian standard. So because you consume vodka in a different way, neat, or in cocktails. There are many styles of vodka and many qualities of vodka depending what you make it for. In Russia, it's very important how vodka tastes neat. We understand uh, the difference between different styles, different vodkas, undiluted. But if you drink it in a cocktail, of course, you would not taste uh, the actual vodka taste. You will taste a mixture of citrus, fruity notes, spicy notes, everything else. So it's much harder to understand which vodka is inside the cocktail. But of course, if you use a good vodka, it makes a better cocktail. So quality generally is very important also for us humans, for our health. Uh, and if you have an option, always go for a well-made quality vodka. And it doesn't have to be the most expensive vodka, but it has to be made uh, for example, in a country which understands uh, vodka process like Russia or Poland and uh, go for the reputable brands. Let's now talk now what is the difference between all those many vodkas in the world. 
So we say there are around 5,000 different vodkas. What makes them different from each other? Not just uh, the price of the bottle or the shape of the bottle or the name. Uh, we are talking about the liquid now. Yes, what makes the liquid inside the bottle special or different? On this screen, you can see a few uh, different raw materials uh, which are used to produce vodka around the world. So, as I said in Russia, when it used to be called bread wine, vodka in Russia is, ma is made mostly from wheat, which is a type of a grain which makes white uh, flour, which you can use in cooking and for making bread, in pastry. But in Russia also, a lot of wheat is used to make vodka. So, the classic Russian style of vodka is wheat vodka like Russian Standard, like many other Russian vodkas, most of them actually. And because it's such a perfect balanced uh, style for vodka, you can find a lot of large famous international brands also making vodka from wheat. I will give you a few examples of big names. In Sweden, another vodka market, the biggest uh, vodka they make is Absolute. An absolute is also made from wheat. Then you probably saw the French vodka brand Grey Goose, which is a French wheat vodka. So you can find wheat vodka from many, many countries now, and it's one of the most classic vodka styles. If we talk about Polish vodka, and Poland makes a lot of vodka, it's one of the largest vodka markets in the world, they prefer to use a different type of grain uh, to make vodka, they make it from rye. Rye, if we compare it with wheat, is a darker flour, darker grain, and it makes, for example, dark rye bread and very different taste profile. It's more spicy, it's a little bit more dense, more heavy, sweeter. So it makes a slightly different vodka style, like big Polish brands, Zubrovka, Belvedere, uh, they are all made from rye. And sometimes in Poland, they use potatoes to make vodka. So not many vodka around the world is made from potatoes. In fact, very few. And most of them come from Poland. And uh, a few other brands you can find here and there. For example, in England, where I'm based, uh, there is a brand of potato vodka called Chase. Uh, so potato gives a very different taste profile to any type of grain, to wheat, to rye. Potato gives a a much more earthy uh, taste profile, which is close to tequila, close to cachaca or to even white rum. So it's very different for a vodka category as a style. Uh, you can also use some other grains uh, to make vodka, not just wheat and rye. In Finland, for example, and other Scandinavian countries, they prefer to use barley. We know barley if we talk about spirits uh, from whiskey category, right? Because all whiskies are made from barley. But you can also make vodka from barley, like for example, vodka brand called Finland, Finlandia, sorry. Uh, it's a barley vodka. You can also mix the grains together. You can mix wheat and rye, wheat, rye and barley. And this generic type of vodka is called grain vodka. For example, Smirnov, the largest vodka brand in the world, owned by the company called Diageo, it is a grain vodka. They don't make it 100% from wheat or from rye. They blend different grains together and then they do distillation. That is why it's called grain vodka. Stolichnaya is another grain vodka example. Okay. And finally, in the last 10 years or so, the vodka trends continue to evolve and uh, some companies started to create vodka from very unusual materials, which was never done before, from things which you don't associate with classic vodka styles. For example, corn in America, where you know there is a lot of corn being grown in the USA, they also make quite a few corn vodkas, like Tito's in Texas and, for example, uh, Crystal Head. A few brands made in the USA are made from corn. And then you can find 
Grape vodkas made in cognac region in France from the same grapes you make cognac, like Ciroc, another premium vodka which is belonging to Diageo. And in England here, we even have a couple of vodkas made from milk. Uh, one brand is called Black Cow. And it gives you a very creamy, very soft, very uh, thick uh, uh, pa palate profile. So very unusual. So as you can see, a vodka category can be very versatile. And when you choose your vodkas, you can also look at the raw materials, what it's made from. And that will give you a good idea about the style of vodka. And if you're working in a bar, it's nice to have a few different vodkas based on different styles and different raw materials. So you can actually have different taste profiles. The second important thing in the vodka category is uh, what is inside the bottle. It's spirit, ethanol, uh, the alcohol part of the mixture, and it's water. Because vodka is not just pure spirit. Vodka is a blend of two things, water and alcohol. So H2O and the ethanol part of the blend. So how much water is in a bottle of vodka? In fact, quite a lot, because when you look at the label and you see ABV, alcohol by volume ratio, for vodka, it has to be minimum 40%. Some vodkas are even stronger, 43, 45, 50% alcohol by volume. What does it mean, alcohol by volume? It means that inside the bottle, the volume of pure alcohol, of ethanol, is 40%. And the rest of it is water. So 60% of the blend is pure water. So that's essentially what is vodka. Vodka is a blend of alcohol and water. And as you understand, uh, because there is so much water in the production, it's important the water quality, where it comes from. That is why good distilleries of vodka, they are usually situated next to a very good water source. For example, St. Petersburg in Russia, which used to be the capital during the monarchy in Russia, but it used, it's our cultural and scientific capital nowadays. It's uh, based on uh, next to the largest uh, lake of fresh um, glacial origin water in Russia called Lake Ladoga. And this water is very soft, very pure and perfect for vodka production. That is why St. Petersburg also used to be the capital of distillation and we have now a few very large distilleries in St. Petersburg. Russian Standard Distillery, Ladoga Distillery and a few others. If you look at Scotland, for example, the example, why there are so many whiskey distilleries in Scotland? Because the water is great. There is one river in Scotland called River Spey, for example. And there are about uh, 80 whiskey distilleries along one river because the water is fantastic for making uh, spirits. So this is another thing to consider when you look at the quality of your uh, vodka. It's the raw materials that shows you the style and the taste and the quality of water, the location of the distillery where it is made. And finally, the third point to understand, uh, which leads us to the final taste of the product and the final quality of the product is the type of distillation, which we need to use to produce alcohol, to make it. You probably already studied in your course that all spirits become spirits because the alcohol is concentrated in them by means of distillation. Because in the natural world, uh, you cannot make anything stronger than wine or beer, the natural fermentation process. That's when we have a process of natural bacteria called yeast, eating sugar, which is uh, found inside fruit, inside grain, berries. And by eating sugar, the yeast produces um, alcohol and gas, CO2. So this is the natural process of fermentation. That's how we make beer, that's how we make wine. And um, when the, all the sugar is eaten, there is no more food, the bacteria, the yeast dies, and usually you're left with around 
12-15% of alcohol in your beverage. So this is not a spirit yet because the alcohol level is not very high. So what do we do to make it spirit? We need to concentrate alcohol, right? And by concentration, how can we achieve it? We, we can achieve it by evaporating the liquid and condensating it later. So this is a picture of a very old technique of distillation, alembic pot still, which you can still find in classic spirit productions, in some single malt whiskey production, some rums, some uh, cognacs, armagnacs are still made using this old technique. So this still is made from copper because as a metal, it was very conductive, very easy to make things boil inside copper. And uh, you start, you put your wine or your beer inside this pot. That is why they call them sometimes pot or kettle, like a teapot. And you start warming it up by coal or nowadays by electricity. And you're waiting until it reaches the boiling point. So now, what is the secret of uh, being able to separate alcohol from everything else? The secret, which, which is why it was a little bit mysterious back in the old days, because only alchemists knew it, only monks. That is why all these words are, you know, Arabic by origin, alchemy, alembic, alcohol. They are all, you know, from, from that alchemist's world. The secret is in the different temperature for boiling, for water and for ethanol, for alcohol. Everyone knows, yes, when we make a cup of tea of masala chai, <laughs> the water temperature, it boils at 100 degrees centigrade, right? And the alchemists knew that the alcohol boils faster. The alcohol has a quicker boiling point around 78 degrees centigrade. That is why when we heat our beer or wine inside the teapot, the first thing which evaporates will be alcohol, leaving the water for later. That is how we can concentrate it by condensation. As you can see, there is a, a, a thin swan neck going to the second vessel, and this, and this concentrates your alcohol. So if you do it once, this is called one distillation it gets from 12, 15 to 25% alcohol. Still not enough, we want it stronger. That is why the classic distillation uses two distillations. When whiskeys or cognacs are twice distilled and sometimes three times distilled, because the second distillation gives you 65, 75% strength of your ethanol, of your alcohol, which is good enough. And this is our spirit. So I hope the method is clear. So how does it happen in the 21st century? How do we make more than vodka? Because if you look at this method back in the old days, if you get to 75% of strength, it's not 100% pure, right? The other 20, 25% are impurities, which means other chemicals, uh, aldehydes, fusel oils, uh, you know, different fatty acids. So there is a lot of things still in our alcohol, which gives it a lot of taste, a lot of flavor, but also a lot of impurities. And the modern day vodka is very clean, is very pure. So this can be achieved by a different type of distillation, which was invented about a century ago, called continuous uh, distillation. As you can see, it's a very much more modern system. It's not only one pot, one uh, pot to distill. It's a system of column, very tall stainless steel columns, which together make one distillation unit. I am showing you a scheme just to see what is happening inside this unit when we are doing a continuous distillation. So it's not one distillation, two or three. Here you cannot count them. It's one system making hundreds of micro distillations. Inside every column, as you can see on this image, there are many, many metal different levels, perforated plates, 50 to 70 in each column. 
So each of those levels is like a micro distillation, which collects the condensed alcohol when we start evaporating it. The higher it gets into the column, the cleaner the spirit becomes. So after we finish the whole cycle of this continuous distillation, we get to 96, even 98% of purity of our ethanol, which is much cleaner than what we can do using a pot still. That is why in the 21st century, the majority of vodkas and the majority of uh, other clean spirits like gin uh, are made using continuous distillation. I hope now this is clear for you uh, because it's important to understand when you look at the bottle to analyze which type of spirit is that. Is it continuously distilled or is it pot distilled, which also gives you a totally different taste profile, totally different impurity level and the understanding of the process. Talking about the purity, that's why a couple of figures I will show you, that's why it's important to use modern technology if you want to produce very clean vodka. Uh, every country has uh, the legislation which stipulates what is the maximum level of impurities allowed uh, in a liter of vodka. In European Union, for example, it's allowed to have up to 40 milligrams per one liter. And depending on the quality of the vodka, it can be much lower, actually. Here is a figure for Russian standard vodka. It's uh, more than 100 times cleaner than required by law, which makes it one of the premium top vodkas around the world. Yeah. And the big part in the purity is played by distillation process and the modern technology used at the distillery. Finally, I'm just finishing for you the production process of vodka. We got our alcohol distilled. We blend it with pure water. And the final stage of the, of the process is filtration. Before you bottle the product, it makes it softer, more balanced, and, and finalized in terms of purity and clarity if you pass it through classic charcoal filters. So here you see an image of tall um, stainless columns filled with um, charcoal cartridges where you pass your liquid already mixed between water and alcohol before you bottle it. And sometimes you can use different types of filters. Uh, you can use cellulose filter, quartz filter and a few others. And the, the final product is also kind of finished by this filtration. The resting uh, stage before the bottling is the ultimate final stage. This is where you leave for a few days your, your you know, finished blend to rest in very big vessels and very big stainless steel tanks for, for it to achieve its balance on the molecular level, to settle. As they say in the whiskey world, uh, to let the ingredients marry. So this is also affecting the final taste and if the vodka is balanced and well rested, it will also taste softer and will not taste very harsh or aggressive. So as you can see, there are a few stages of the production and together they define the final product. Right, uh, so this was my main uh, part on the production. And uh, we can also now talk about the cocktails. And before we talk about them, I can show you a little video. Uh, I hope it works, uh, which um, uh, I filmed a few years ago live during Sochi Winter Olympic Games. So when Russia was hosting Olympic Games in 2016, uh, we were invited by um, an American TV channel, um, NBC, to talk about the Russian culture and the Russian vodka, vodka styles. And uh, that was a video we recorded about how Russians drink vodka, what I mentioned to you, and about the Russian Moscow mule. So I will show you the video in a moment just to, um, to show you how you make Russian mule, Russian style. <laughs> 
let me open it and I will share it hopefully on my screen for you. All right, when you're in Rome, you drink wine. When you're in Russia, you drink vodka. And Tatyana uh, Petrakova is the brand ambassador for Russian Standard Vodka. And I got to tell you, uh, we've been, I've been to Russia and I've had some vodka, but nothing like this. Well, it's indeed a, probably the best Russian. I'm not sure if this is shared. Let me just try and do it via uh, our screen video file. So you can see it in the best possible quality. Let's try it this time. When you're in Rome, you drink wine. When you're in Russia, you drink vodka. And Tatyana uh, Petrakova is the brand ambassador for Russian Standard Vodka. And I got to tell you, uh, we've been, I've been to Russia and I've had some vodka, but nothing like this. Well, it's indeed uh, probably the best Russian vodka available in almost 80 countries in the world. So we can say we are the global Russian vodka mm -hmm. and we are very proud to share the taste with you. What is, what is it? What makes a quality vodka? It's the raw ingredients, very much so. So, finest winter wheat, soft glacial water, and then the pure distillation, a very modern distillation. Now, if you're going to have it straight, how do you, what, I noticed we this, got some... The, in Russia, we drink vodka neat, so mm -hmm. three magic ingredients. Great yeah. company, yeah. like you, good vodka, and some good food. So, oh. what I've prepared is a little bit of a uh, zakuski, we call it in Russian. So, it's a fresh lemon with salmon roe, or we call it the red caviar. Yes. So, we do, we have a toast. Okay. So, let's cheers to Sochi, Sochi. and to good health. Yes. All right. And Good. then we, eat, we drink it. Drink. And then we eat it. Okay. So, it's like a little ritual. Oh, ow. <laughs> mm. All right. And then is the combination. Yes. Wow. Salty, spicy, fresh, and, you know, That's vodka amazing. Taste. Now, but it, it, even the, co the cocktail culture has started to take hold here in Russia. What's a good uh, vodka cocktail? Well, vodka is the most versatile in terms of drinks. You can mix it, sorry, with anything. I'm still <laughs> chewing on my zakuska. So what we create is mm -hmm. Russian mule. Okay. Very easy. Three ingredients. Okay. Vodka, quality ginger beer, yes. and some fresh lime. Ooh. So what you want to do, over ice, pour some vodka general splash, mm -hmm. like one one shot measure. Yes. Squeeze a couple of lime wedges for like freshness and citrusy zing, mm -hmm. and top up with quality ginger beer. Oh, I love ginger beer. Then it gives it spicy, balanced taste. What's a Please. what's a Russian? What do you say like a bottoms up? What do you say in Russian? Pei da dna. Pei da dna. Pei da dna. Pei da dna. Davai. Mm. Oh, loving it more and I'm more. loving it. Mm. <laughs> so I hope, guys, that, that was. Uh, I gotta try it one more time. <laughs> yeah, it kills all the jokes. <laughs> I'm trying to move to not sharing my screen so that you can see me um, wrapping up uh, my presentation. So as you can see, uh, vodka category is uh, versatile. There are many, many vodkas in the world, about 5,000 different brands. There are ma not many um, quality and well-known international brands. I would say about 200, 300 brands in total. But you can see a huge variety and every country makes their own vodkas. You can find vodka made in India, made in South Africa, made in America, made in Poland, made in Russia. Uh, I hope I gave you some key information about the different styles so you can make uh, a, you know, an educated choice when you're choosing vodkas you work with or you make your drinks with. And uh, never, never serve vodka warm temperature. It's very important to have it always chilled, always cold, even from the freezer or fridge. In terms of cocktails, you will see a huge variety of cocktails that can be done from vodka, from the mule, to classic vodka martini, which is essentially a pure vodka mixed with a dash of vermouth and a little lemon twist or olive twist. You can do classic uh, variations as porn star martini and uh, cosmopolitan. 
etc etc espresso martini is now one of the most popular ones in the on trade because coffee and vodka go really well together and make a very energetic drink which wakes you up and things like that so i hope you enjoyed my session and i'll pass you back to uh, vinay and uh, i hope to see you guys sometime soon for another one thank you and namaste uh Hi, Tatiana. Like, we have a few questions. Of course. From, okay, so, shall we start? Absolutely. I would love the questions. I hope uh, you could see my presentation clearly and the sound was okay, first of all. Yeah, everything was good. <laughs> Lovely. So, you can see on the screen the questions. Oh, of course. I will need to put my glasses, sorry, because they are quite small on my screen. One second. Uh, let's have a look. Here are the questions. What is the difference between ABV and VV? I'm not sure what is VV, Vinay. What do you know this abbreviation? Volume by volume. It's I think in alcohol. Volume by volume. I think the question refers to the difference, maybe what in America is called proof, volume by volume, and what in yeah. Europe and the rest of the world is called alcohol by volume. Essentially, it's two different systems. And the easy way to understand them is one equals twice as much as the other. So if you see a bottle of rum, for example, from the Caribbean, which says 80 proof, you divide it by two, which makes it 40% alcohol by volume. So it's literally the difference is two times more or two times less. What happens when we have vodka warm? Does it affect its taste and texture? It's a very good question. It does affect the taste and the texture very much. Because alcohol is a very aggressive, active chemical, ethanol. And the hotter you make it, the more aggressive the molecules start to behave. So it makes it thinner and it makes it harsher if you taste it warm. So if we chill vodka to zero temperature or even below the alcohol part of the blend becomes very much more stable and much more balanced and the vodka texture becomes thicker you can see very cold vodka it's almost oily almost syrupy when you pour it so that is the texture which is changed and it's much nicer and much more pleasant to consume so when you drink cold vodka it will be softer cleaner and a much more pleasant viscosity than if you drink a warm one. Does water affect the vodka taste? Yes, and we just spoke about it. Water is a big component of the vodka blend and the quality of water does affect the quality of vodka. You probably know that water, even bottled by itself, is such a huge category and can be so versatile. That is why we have so many different mineral waters around the world. Uh, French water, Avian, Perrier, Italians and Pellegrina. You can have water from Fiji or what a local spring water. And each of those waters will have a slightly different mineral co content, which affects the taste. So when you make vodka, you need as little minerality as possible. So it doesn't make it harsh or doesn't create sediment in the bottle. That is why vodka production usually softens water. And some producers are even using a reverse osmosis process to demineralize water before you blend it with the spirit. So the water production is a big part of the vodka production. Which vodkas are primarily made with corn? Mainly vodkas coming from the United States of America and Canada, because that is where you grow a lot of maize or corn. The, na the national spirit of America is bourbon, for example, right? Uh, because it's using corn. More than 51% of the blend for bourbon has to be corn to be called bourbon. So Americans make mostly corn vodkas. Texas, some other states, the brands like Tito's, which I mentioned, and the brands like Crystal Head from Canada, they are corn vodkas. 
What is the difference between, between Moscow Mule and Bjorn Moscow Mule? Well, by the sound of the second one, it comes from Sweden <laughs> or from Scandinavia. There is no big difference. It's different products you make to make the same drink. You can choose a different vodka. So if it's a Russian vodka, you can call it Russian Mule. If it's a Swedish vodka, you can call it Bjorn Mule <laughs> very easily. You can also use Icelandic vodka <laughs> and call it Bjork Mule if you want. <laughs> uh, so um, also the type of ginger beer could be different. Uh, currently, you have more and more producers creating new ginger beers. And as they are slightly different in taste, so you can actually create different Moscow mules. We used to run a competition for bartenders called the Master of the Mule, where you can come up with your ideas for a mule twist. You can use fresh ginger in it. You can use chili to enhance the spiciness. You can add some fresh berries, blueberries, strawberries, and make a berry mule. And basically, mint also works very well in the profile, so it can be very, very different. Basically, these are all different twists on the mule. Uh, vodka is drunk in shot, mixture or cocktail. Yeah, vodka is drunk uh, in all these ways, depending on the situation where you are and the culture of drinking. If you're drinking, for example, in Russia with your friends or you want to create an authentic Russian party, you drink quality vodka neat, undiluted, very nice and cold, but always with food. You don't drink it without anything because otherwise you will get drunk very quickly. So you need to prepare your table of nice food, little starters, little tapas or main dishes, even desserts go well with vodka. But if you are in a bar, in a cocktail club, where you can make a nice drink with vodka, or even at home, you can do, if it's a nice hot day, a beautiful cocktail. Or even a jug, uh, which you can share with different people. For example, uh, Moscow Mule is a very easy one to create in big quantities. Or Bloody Mary, for example, with tomato juice and spices. And um, then it's a perfect situation to use it as a mixture or cocktail. What are the potential health benefits of vodka? Well, very good question, because every Russian will tell you that if you're feeling a little bit cold or if you're falling with a flu or COVID, as in the current state of affairs, uh, vodka has very good um, benefits in terms of killing the germs. It's a very good anesthetic, antiseptic, and it has also anti-inflammatory proper properties. So before you take your paracetamol, etc you can have before going to bed a nice shot of vodka with some pepper in it or some ginger or some garlic even and next morning you will feel much better because vodka really works on your body and um, makes the blood run fast and kill the germs of course in moderation because if you drink the whole bottle you will be very hangover so as a medicine it needs to be in small quantities but it can work really really well and even in a situation where you have a cut or you injured yourself, you have, you know, uh, you cut yourself with a knife. Sometimes if you don't have any other antiseptic, you can use vodka on the wound and it also helps it heal and stay clean. Does serving vodka chilled enhances its taste? Absolutely, it does. And if you plan to serve your vodka neat uh, not in a cocktail always chill it as much as possible even for a cocktail as you guys all know you don't like a warm cocktail cocktail have to be always very chilled using quality ice and that makes a premium drink as well so always we're talking cold you can also have in cold winter months a special category of cocktails called hot cocktails or warm cocktails but it's very different that's when you boil things together with spices, with apple juice, for example, like you're doing mild wine, glue wine, or mild cider. That's when you can have an actual hot drink. It's a little bit like tea, but with addition of vodka. And in winter months, it works very well in many countries, especially in Europe or in, up in the mountains where people go to ski mm -hmm. to have a hot drink. And that's when you have a culture of having alcoholic drinks warm as well. Why are some vodkas so expensive? It's like with every other category of products. 
Some cars are more expensive than others, some perfumes, some clothes. It's about brand positioning. So here we go into the marketing territory. And when you create a brand of product, it can be anything, it can be vodka, it can be juice, or can be, you know, uh, watches. You decide what is your brand positioning and what is your price point. So it's not 100% related to the production process and to the quality of raw materials, but it's related to the brand positioning and where you want to be. So there are premium brands, super premium brands, there are economy brands, etc. There are no name brands, very cheap ones. So some vodkas intentionally position themselves to be very expensive for different reasons. They like talking about expensive crystal, which they use for the bottle, glass, uh, some weird distillation. Some vodkas claim to be filtered through gold, through diamonds, etc. You can actually put the actual diamonds inside the bottle and make it the most expensive bottle of vodka in the world, which has been done. You can partner with a famous uh, artist to make a limited edition. So limited editions are more expensive than normal. And even water can play a role in the vodka price. Mm, a few years ago, Stolichne created a series of vodkas called uh, Rare Waters of the World, where they used waters from the Andes, from Fiji, from some rare water sources, and that affected the final price of vodka. So it's a, it's, it's a story. It's, the price is affected by the quality of product, of course, but also by the story behind it by the limited edition situation, by the special bottling, and altogether that could be expensive or less so. But good vodka doesn't have to be too expensive. It can be balanced. So I always recommend you to find the perfect balance between the price and the quantity, the quality. Why in vodka congeners are low? It's because the type of distillation that vodka is using is continuous distillation and not a pot still. Congeners are high in whiskies, in, in cognacs, in rums, uh, when we're using the pot still distillation. That's when congeners can be up to 25, 30% of the volume. Because vodka is generally, uh, in the modern days, distilled using continuous still, it removes the congeners because there are many, many more distillations inside the process. So as you say, instead of 75% alcohol by volume, we get to 96, 98% alcohol by volume, undiluted alcohol part, and that makes it much cleaner. And that is why it's low. Can we mix two different vodkas in a cocktail? You can, nobody will feel the difference. Uh, so there is not a lot of point to do so, because um, even if vodkas are different styles, they don't create, like in the perfume world, if you mix roses with patchouli or wood, you know, that will create a different perfume. In vodka, the, the difference between um, tastes and aromas are much more subtle. So by mixing two vodkas, you will not create a very strong difference in the product. So I would suggest to use one for one cocktail and uh, it will work perfectly. And there is no need to mix more than one. You understood everything. <laughs> very nice. I'm very pleased. That was my mission today, <laughs> to share a little bit of uh, key things on the vodka category with you. So hopefully it makes it clear, because a lot of uh, people around the world still think that all vodka tastes the same, or vodka is just pure alcohol and nothing else, uh, or vodka made from potatoes only. So I hope I can explain to you a bit more in details the versatility of the category and all the different types of it. Thank you so much, Ms. Tatiana, for gaining our knowledge on the vodka. So we appreciate for your being here, apart from your busy schedule. Always pleasure. I'm happy to find time for you, and especially on a Saturday. That was not very difficult. It's still a nice morning here in London, the beginning of the day. And I wish you all a fantastic weekend, and I hope to see you again for another session sometime soon. Thank so you. Sure, now, now we will move to the next part, that is to the demonstration of the cocktails.
Hello everyone. So today we will start with the session of vodka cocktails. So for vodka cocktails we will use the brand Russian Standard that is from Russia and in this in 1894 Dmitry Mendeleev the greatest scientist in all Russian received a degree from a bazaar to create an imperial quality of Russian standard of Russian vodka. The Russian standard was born today in St. Petersburg. Our state of the art distillery allowed us to bring this vodka heritage to the 21st century using winter wheat from the Russian steeps and pure glacial water from Lake Ladoga. We have created a genuine taste of Russian vodka that is once again being celebrated throughout the world. So we we'll thank Ms. Tatiana Petrakova, Mr. Malik Kumar from Wine and Spread Club of India to bring Russian standard vodka to us. So, first we will start with the vodka tini. Vodka tini is a variation of martini where instead of gin, we will use Russian standard vodka in it. For this, we will take a martini glass and the garnish of the cocktail is olives, three olives. And the method we are using over here is shaken method. So we will pour around 45 ml of our Russian standard vodka. And then pour 15 ml of dry water. Olives to garnish the vodka martini. The next cocktail we will using, we will making in this session is a Gibson. So the Gibson is a variation of martini. 
but it has a very little difference between a Gibson and a vodka martini. And the difference is only of the garnish. In vodka martini or vodka martini, we use three olives. In Gibson, we will use cocktail onions. So first, we make our garnish ready. We use pickled olives or cocktail olives. Sorry, onions. The onions are big, you can keep just one onion in a glass. But they are like small, you can keep three. So the garnish is ready. So next, we will prepare the top plate. The next cocktail in the list we will prepare is Gimlet. Gimlet is same, it's the variation of martini. But in this we will use lemon juice instead of vermouth. First we will take our Russian standard vodka. Keep the glass full. Take a shaker. Next, we will pour a Russian standard vodka of around 45 ml to 60 ml.
the garlic is uh, lemon green. So, okay, a lemon green. A nice green. So, these are the three variations of vodka martini that we have prepared. Vodka tini with vermouth, a vicious salad vodka with olives. Then next is Gibson with cocktail onion with vermouth and vodka. Next is Jimlet. That is with garnish of lemon peel with vodka and lime juice. Thank you. So the next variation of martini we will prepare is dirty martini vodka based. First, we will take a martini can. And in dirty martini, we used to prepare with the olive brine. Take some olive brine. Around 50 ml, 15 ml to 20 ml, and if you like to add some extra taste to it, you can take like a two to three olives as well. In the martini, and then. Get like extra taste of olives in your martini. And then we will add 45 ml of our special standard water here. Double swim because ice and the particles of the olive that also remain in the swimming. And next, we garnish it with the olive. For beating this, please. in the center. Cheers. So next cocktail we will prepare is black diamond. So black diamond, if you have seen it's a movie also and where you can see the diamond with a red line inside. So we will prepare the cocktail for this First we need a chill wine glass. We take a shaker. The ingredients for this cocktail is 45 ml of Russian standard vodka. So 
lime juice simple syrup
So flat machine consists of old fashioned glass with ice, with kalua and vodka on the top. In white fashion, we use vodka, kalua with floating like cream or like a, if you don't have cream, you can make milk floating on the top. So first, Glass hold. And then we pour the water. If you don't have a jigger and you would like to pour it 30 ml exact, how you can do? Simplest way. You can take the bottle and you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. When it's come to 30 ml, you can stop and you can pour it anywhere. So that's the simplest way. If you don't find the jigger and you know how to pour 30 ml exactly. So by this method, even you don't need jigger and this will also impress your guest. Now you can pour exact 30 ml or 60 ml in, in front of the guest. And then we'll put some color. Then you can put some milk in the top. Both with the straws. So guests can stir and enjoy his black pressure and white pressure. Thank you. So this is the most simplest way of drinking or the most simplest vodka serving method we take a vodka, we take a tall glass fill it with ice and the same way we will pour the vodka Now you can add like Sprite to it, lemonade or whatever the guest like as in chaser or like as a mixer in it. We'll put nice turn and then add some tonic to it. Instead of tonic you can add Sprite, soda, cola or any juice, whatever the guest likes. This is the most simplest cocktail with a nice garnish in it. Thank you. So, next cocktail we will prepare vodka based is Chi Chi. Chi Chi, that is C H I C H I. The name is like a fancy name, but the cocktail has. This is like, or you can call it, is a vodka based pina colada. The same ingredient, but instead of rum, we will use vodka. So we will take some ice first. And the next 
next this cream and then the method we use is blended method we blend everything with the salt then we will take out the excess of salt from the glass then we will add the ice Traditional method says the stirred method. We'll put everything in the glass like a builder and then we will just give a one or two stir. But nowadays, because the taste of everything was coming in a different style, like when you gulp the first tomato juice, then some Tabasco sauce, then vodka, taste is coming. So nowadays, we just prepare them in a shaker and we'll shake it. If you like it hot, you can put some more, but for one or two dash is enough. Some assistant sauce, pepper, and then some salt. Classic cocktail has a garnish of celery stick. If celery stick is not available, we can put the lime, the lime wedge on the top. 
if you have brim the glass then we no need to give the straws along with the cocktail thank you next cocktail we going to prepare is caprioshka caprioshka is a vodka based cocktail which has lime and sugar so we'll cut some lime chunks Put them in a shaker. Put some brown sugar. And then pure pour about 60 ml of water. We will just extract some lemon juice and sugar mix it. as it is because the ice also has the taste of the vodka, lemon and sugar now we will pop up with some fresh lime Serve it with a couple of straws. Cheers. So, next cocktail of vodka base we'll prepare is Cosmopolitan. This is a classic cocktail and known everywhere. This cocktail is served in a chilled cocktail glass. Ingredients are vodka, lime juice, quail through and cranberry juice. First we will a chilled cocktail glass and then we will add the ingredient in our shaker. The method we use is shaken. First we will add 45 ml. Vodka. The recipe says coin through, but coin through is an expensive liquor, so some hotels use triple sand, a substitute for coin through and an economical than coin through of 50 ml. Liquor. 10 to 15 ml of lime juice then 
create any juice. Then we will shake all the ingredients with ice. And then double straight from coffee. And for the garnish, we will use orange peel. Then we'll garnish it with a lime wedge. There's a variation of kamakase which is very famous nowadays. The ingredients are almost same. Alcoholic and non-alcoholic, but 
we are putting a normal colic blue grass of syrup. If you like, you can put some sugar in it, or you can put some sugar juice or even some kalua, a coffee liqueur, but a kalua that leaves a bitter taste in this cocktail. So I don't suggest personally to put some kalua in it. Take 
online. Right from the side. Squeeze the juice. Have it removed inside. And then we will top up with ginger ale. and a couple of straws. Enjoy your drink. Next cocktail we are going to prepare is Blue Lagoon. For the ingredient we need vodka, sweet and sour like lemon juice. We will add the blue color with blue glasses syrup and at the end we require some sprite to top up. We put around 45 ml of vodka. We will serve this in a tall glass. We will serve this in a very thin glass. Sprite or lemonade, whatever we have the availability, and we'll serve with we'll serve with double straws and a spoon. This very eye-opening cocktail. Enjoy. Hi. So next cocktail we will prepare is a variation of Bloody Mary. This one is like an Arabic Bloody Mary or Bloody Mary which some cumin because Arabic people they love cumin a lot. They use like a powdered cumin powdered cumin for the food or not. So we will make a Bloody Mary in the Arabic style. First we will rim the glass with Salt mixed with some cumin powder. Like one of the star category hotel named Saint Witches, they have the standard of Bloody Mary. Like if the Saint Witches is an Arabic country, so they will prepare like Bloody Mary in Arabic style. If it is somewhere else in US, in England, they will prepare like Bloody Mary as per the local culture or the country. Next, we will add ice sweat. Shaker. Same ingredient as in 
ready many we will put some tomato juice So next cocktail we will prepare the basic cocktail or the most basic cocktail is from vodka base is screwdriver. In this we need around 45 ml of vodka. We will put ice. Cheers. So next cocktail we gonna prepare is a variation of screwdriver. We will add one more ingredient to the screwdriver and the name will change. The cocktail is Harvey Wallbanger. So for the Harvey Wallbanger, first we will take We'll take ice in the glass. Then we will add 45 ml of vodka to it. Then we will add Galliano. Galliano is a liqueur which is of vanilla base or which has vanilla taste and then or vanilla flavor. Then we will add orange juice to it. a little bit garnish it with a orange slice then serve with a couple of straws and cheers so next cocktail we're gonna prepare is name is Cape Cod 
but it's a very simple cocktail. We will take ice in a glass. We will add around 30 ml of vodka to it. And then we will top up, the, top up with cranberry juice. That's the simplest cocktail and that is Cape Cod. Serve with sterile and a couple of straws. Cheers! So we will prepare two cocktails together which have same recipe, almost same recipe but a little bit of difference. We will prepare greyhound and a salty dog. For the salty dog, we will rim the glass. And for the greyhound, we do. It's very easy to remember like salty dog with salt has the name so we will just trim the glass with salt we'll put ice and both we'll put a 30 ml of water each And then top it up with a grapefruit juice. With a stir of each. couple of straws in the greyhound because salty dog is rimmed with the salt and a garnish of lime yeah. thank you so next cocktail we're gonna prepare is vodka based sea breeze for sea breeze we require vodka cranberry juice and grapefruit juice for this we take in a tall glass we'll put ice The method we are going to use is build up method, we will put 45 ml of vodka, then we will put 45 ml of grapefruit juice and then rest we will top up with cranberry juice. Then we will garnish it with an orange slice, couple of straws and a stir. Thank you. So next cocktail we are going to prepare is sex on the beach. That is some ice then we will add 45 ml of vodka 
will add 15 ml of peat slabs. We'll add around 45 ml of orange juice. Then we we'll add 45 ml to 60 ml of cranberry juice. Cheers. So next cocktail we're gonna prepare is Woo Woo. This is a classic cocktail. For the ingredient we require for it, vodka, peach snaps, and cranberry juice. First, we'll put the ice in a glass, in a tall glass. Then we will pour some vodka. Then we add some peach snaps to it. Again, we'll top up with cranberry juice. We use some oil slice to garnish. with a couple of straws and a stir for it. Cheers! Thank you everyone for joining today's session. Hope it was informative. We will see you tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Jai Hind!